As the data pours in from the dramatic Maharashtra election results, the CSDS Lok Niti survey is calling the results the consequence of the BJP building an invincible Hindu umbrella. I'm Barkhadat, you're with the Mojo story. Our focus today continues to be on decoding the results that we have seen in Maharashtra. Results that have come as a dramatic jolt for the opposition party. Remember the three parties of the MDA, the Mahavikas Agari, has together got fewer seats than the Eknath Shinde Shiv Sena faction. It is now well established that women have been a game changer in this election thanks to Shinde government's Larki Behen scheme. But it may surprise you to know, as the CSDS Lokriti survey reveals, that 22% of Muslim voters also voted for the BJP-led alliance. There's a lot to understand and decode here, including the impact on national politics as well as political strategy by all parties. Joining me on the program today is our newsmaker, Professor Sanjay Kumar uh, of the CSDS. Sanjay Ji, uh, always a pleasure. Let me start by asking you how surprised you were with the actual result. No, oh, absolutely surprised. Uh, why I say that? Because our estimate from the survey in clearly indicated that Mahayuti is ahead in the electoral race. Remember when we talked long before the elections took place, we had done a survey even before the dates were announced. In that survey, we got a sense that it is a close fight. But in that survey also, we got a sense that Mahayuti is ahead. When we did our pre and post poll mix kind of a survey, very close to the date of voting, we did get a sense that Mahayuti is ahead by say four or five percent vote share. And we went public indicating that our survey estimate four percent lead for Mahayuti. If that was that was the case, then Mahayuti could have got 160, 165 seats. So certainly. Mahayuti getting 230 or crossing 235 seats was a surprise to me and my team as well. Now, uh, your uh, survey describes the different groups that backed the BJP-led alliance. And I'm just going to read out some of these details. You say one in every three Marathas, including the Kunbis, voted for the BJP-led alliance. You find that one-fourth of every Adivasi respondent and one-fifth of every Dalit supported the BJP. Nearly four of every 10 OBCs backed the BJP. I'll come to the religious question later, but when we look at these caste groups, Sanjayji, how do you explain this? It's what you call an invincible Hindu umbrella. See, if an alliance or a party registered such a convincing victory, uh, it is not surprising to note that, you know, sections of the voters, when we are talking in terms of whether caste, religion, age, anything, uh, would be tilted massively in favor of that alliance. Look at the vote share difference between the two alliances. Almost 15% vote share different. So it is not surprising. Marathas, even in our people survey, we got a sense that Maratha vote is shifted in favor of the Mahayuti. But during the campaign, it got more polarized in favor of the Mahayuti alliance. OBC, always an indication that OBC, despite uh, Mahavika Sagadi alliance partner claiming or uh, asking for a caste census to be conducted all over the country or an OBC census, but the OBC vote was tilted very slightly in favor of Mahayuti even before the elections were held. Uh, Kunbi's vote has shifted in favor of Mahayuti during the campaign. If I look at, if I compare the findings from the pre-poll survey and the post-poll survey which we conducted. The Adivasi vote, we see some shift in the Adivasi vote during the campaign, Dalit vote. So it is not surprising for me to see that the votes of the different social communities are all shifted in favor of Mahayuti. Uh, and that accounts for, and that is the reason why Mahayuti registered such a massive victory. Some might ask what changed in five months? What happened in June and what happened in November? How did November become different from June? There are two theories I've heard for this. One, that the June verdict was overinterpreted, that the vote share difference was actually not so dramatic. And the other is that the opposition did not run a good campaign. Which one do you think it is? No, both. Uh, even before the results were announced, we had a couple of discussions. And I kept mentioning that don't overestimate the Maha Vikas Agadi's strength. Because don't go by the number of seats won by Maha Vikas Agadi in the Lok Sabha election. Uh, look at the vote share estimate. And vote share estimate in the Lok Sabha indicated that the two alliances 
were standing at equal strength even in 2024 Lok Sabha elections. So both theories are right that there was an euphoria and overestimate overestimation about Maha Vikas Agadi's electoral strength because even 2024 Lok Sabha elections they were standing neck to neck close to each other. Second, yes, if you look at the campaign, the entire campaign starting from the ticket distribution pattern, there were lots of ifs and buts. If you look at the Mahavikas Agadi Alliance partners, when it came to ticket distribution, they delayed the pattern of ticket. They delayed distributing the ticket. And if you delay distribution of ticket, you know, if you reach the airport late, if you reach the railway station late, what do you, what happens? You miss the train, you miss the aircraft. Similarly, I think the delay in, in even deciding which party is going to contest how many seats, which party is going to contest which seat, that actually affected the Mahavikas Agadi because it creates a perception among the voters that this is not an alliance which is cohesive. Second, and I consider this as a big factor, uh, that there was no positive narrative uh, with Mahavikas Agadi which they, uh, which they took to the voter. They were banking heavily on the two issues. One, caste census, the OBC census and Samvidhan Bachao. And voters realize that these are the two things on which state government has no role to play, whether it, it is a government by party A or party B. Caste census will be conducted by the central government. Uh, if uh, um, the, the if uh, so, this is not the purview of the state government. So why go along with uh, electing a government which is promising to do caste census, which is promising to save the constitution. Any changes in the constitution can be done only by the central government. So besides these two things, uh, and I think Mahavikas Agadi relied heavily on these two narratives, which was not having a connect with the voters of Maharashtra in the assembly election. Yes, the same issues did connect to the voters in the Lok Sabha election because it was a Lok Sabha election. It was an election to elect the national government. And these two things were are for the, in, in the ambit of the national government. So I think these are the two mistakes, big mistakes by Mahavikas Agadi Alliance. Now, there was a lot of debate and discussion around Yogi Adityanath's slogan, Batenge to Katenge. And even um, uh, Mahayuti Alliance partners like Ajit Pawar, uh, because uh, you know Muslim voters were important in his constituencies, said that we don't believe in this. And then the prime minister came up with Ek Hai to Save Hai. Now, when you look at this, possible polarization, you look at what you call the invincible Hindu umbrella. How do you explain the fact that your survey finds that 22% of Muslims voted for the BJP-led alliance? See, if you you have rightly pointed out the unease Ajit Pawar had with the statement of cutting it to batting it to cutting it, uh, because in the constituencies where his candidates were contesting, there were sizable number of Muslims. And he's mm. trying to keep a distance, trying to have a slight distance from the big statement, butting it or cutting it, actually paid dividend to Ajit Pawar. The data released by Lokmiti CSDS post poll survey clearly indicate that 22% of the Muslims have voted in favor of the Mahayuti alliance, which they may not have expected. So I think there was an ease. I, we all have to accept that there was an ease among alliance partner within the Mahayuti about this statement. And I think that is why I maybe Prime Minister shifted from batenge to, uh, bat, batenge to cuttenge to ek rahenge to safe rahenge. But even ek mm. rahenge to safe rahenge conveys the same meaning. It is the opposite of that. So mm. uh, this, uh, uh, I think this um, this campaign did pay dividend to the BJP in different co in select constituencies. Uh, it helped the voters to mobilize in favor of Mahayuti Alliance in the urban constituencies because the question which is being asked all the time that why this uh, slogan was able, why this slogan worked in Maharashtra and why it did not work in, in Jharkhand. And the answer to that question is Maharashtra is a very urban state. It is 50, 45% urban. And if you look at Jharkhand, Jharkhand is only 25% urban. So this is a slogan which connects with the urban Indian middle class. I'm not saying that all urban middle class would vote on this slogan, but it connects. They, it attracts them. It catches the attention of them. And when it catches the attention of the urban middle class, you are bound to get some votes which you may not have expected earlier.
But how do we explain the increase in the Muslim vote? Uh, because Ajit Pawar played a very strategic role. He created a distance because his con candidates were largely fielded, fielded in constituencies where there's a sizable number of Muslim vote. So he created a distance. He, he, he kept a distance from that and maybe and some local considerations. Uh, I'm not sure whether we would be able to say very clearly about what were the local considerations based on the survey. But some local consideration also helped uh, Mahayuti in getting some Muslim vote. But these are concentrated in pockets. These are not spread all over the all over Maharashtra. What we call the X factor, but we should call the Y factor, the women voters. Uh, the Eknat Shinde Larki Behen scheme, you've done a lot of uh, uh, work and analysis on this. How much did it change? There is one theory that among the Muslims who voted for the BJP, Muslim women may be among them, that this was a hugely successful um, a sort of scheme and it had great resonance on the ground. And a good that you have pointed out, I don't think that we even thought of looking at uh, among the Muslim, which community has shifted in favor of Mahayuti, maybe it's women. Uh, but for a minute, if we leave aside whether the women belong to the Muslim community or the Hindu community, but generally if we look at women as a group of voters, we see a massive shift of women voters in favor of Mahayuti. Shift means if you look at the votes polled among men and votes polled among the women voters for Mahayuti, there is a 7-8% gap uh, in favor of Mahayuti amongst the women vote. So women vote has been decisive in the victory of both the alliances, the JMM alliance in Jharkhand and the Mahayuti alliance in uh, Maharashtra. Look at both uh, both alliances where the ruling parties, both alliances doled out uh, schemes for, for the benefit of women. And this has paid a dividend to both the alliances in both the states. Go out and talk a little bit about where this leaves, in particular, the Congress party. Uh, and I ask this because since the Lok Sabha um, verdict with Congress at 99, there was a sense of a Congress that was on its way to rebuilding itself. I won't use the word resurgent, but on the path of rebuilding. But every single assembly election since then, in Jammu and Kashmir, their alliance partner, Omar Abdullah, said the Congress did not pull its vote. Haryana, everybody thought there would be a Congress win. It ended up being a BJP win. Jharkhand, it's been lifted by the tailwinds of the JMM. And then Maharashtra, of course, is the third consecutive defeat for the Congress in assembly elections. It's a body blow. Where does this leave the Congress party center? Uh, difficult times for Congress party, I must say. But I think. Uh, more, they are heading into more difficult times if they keep going along with the narrative that there is something wrong with the EVMs. They have to have an introspection about what is wrong with their campaign style. What is uh, the campaign which they are leading, which is not connecting to the people? What is, where is the miss between their messaging and people not receiving the right message if they think that they are sending out the right message? But if they keep blaming the EVM, I don't think this is going to do any good for the Congress. I'm glad you've brought this up because it looks like the Congress is in denial about the result, that it feels like this is some sort of, you know, uh, some sort of manipulated result. And, and, and that will only do them more detriment. It will just make them look like bad losers. No, absolutely. Uh, I think whether you lose or you win the election, if you lose the election, you have to accept that there must be something wrong on the part of the party's campaign. There must be something, uh, the, there must be some missing link between the way party started to select the candidate, campaigned and took the message to the voter. There has to be some missing link. But if you blame the, if you think that the missing link is there in the EVM, uh, as I said earlier, it is not going to do any good to the party because it affects the morale of the party worker. It even affects the morale of the voter. If you keep blaming the EVM, then even your own voters are not going to vote for you or they will think twice about voting for the same for your party. Because if I am a voter of a particular party and the party keeps saying whether you vote for this party or that party, the vote goes to a particular party, then your own voters will get disenchanted that even if I am working hard for the party, trying to support the party, but the party is unable to win because of EVM. Why should I go and work for the party? This, this is not at all going any doing any good to the party. 
Finally, this has been an election that has been described as an election where the prime minister did not play uh, a front and central role. We also saw uh, a similar uh, a similar <clears throat> limiting of Modi's exposure in Haryana. Oh, yeah. There is one argument that the BJP can now win elections without Modi. But your post poll survey actually finds that there are still big takers for the double engine, the double engine philosophy. How do you look at brand Modi in the context of these assembly elections? See, there are two or three points which I want to mention. First, uh, Modi's appeal for BJP or Modi's appeal among the voters in the assembly election is less compared to Modi's appeal in the Lok Sabha election. This is established fact. When I say established fact, uh, I'm keeping in mind the various data which we have been gathering in the assembly election and the Lok Sabha election. So there is a clear cut pattern. Modi's ability to pull votes for BJP is much higher in the Lok Sabha elections compared to assembly election. Yes, uh, you're right. I also get that sense that if you look at Haryana and Maharashtra, uh, Modi's role in campaign for BJP has been far less in Haryana and Maharashtra compared to what it used to be maybe four, four or five years ago. Uh, it is true. I would also say that, yes, uh, this victory of BJP is despite Modi's putting in a lot of effort leading the campaign from the front. But still, I think a lot of voters still believe that Modi is the leader of the party. And we know... Uh, in the survey, it also comes out that there are sizable number of voters who think that BJP has been able to do well or voters have been able to vote for the BJP because they like Modi and the double engine ki sarkar. Yes, a bigger number of people don't believe in this theory. And in any state where there are reg strong regional parties, people keep try to keep a distance from this theory that you need mm. the same government of the same party, double engine ki sarkar, for uh, faster growth of faster economic growth of the state but sizable i think the data if i remember correctly 38 percent support this idea and 42 percent are opposed to this idea still of, sizable. of what idea what idea the idea of there should be a double engine ki sarkar for the right greater economic growth of the state so 38 percent people are in support of this view and 42 percent people are opposed to this view if you ask the same question in state like Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, then the support for this idea of double engine sarkar would cross 65%, 70%. But still in a state with very strong regional parties, a uh, sizable number of people still believe that they would like to have a government of the party which is in power at the center. And that actually also helped the Mahayuti Gadbandi in mobilizing votes for uh, the alliance. I think also. There's one more point that the last minute shift is a big thing in these elections. We figured out two new things in this election. A very large number of people, almost 45% people took their voting decision in the last two days. And there mm -hmm. is a shift in the last two days in favor of Mahayuti. Second, a very large number of voters said candidate mattered to them more in these elections compared to the party. And if you look at all those for whom candidate mattered, which is roughly in the range of 50% voters, very large number. Parties did yeah. 30%. And among those, a very large number, almost 60% tended voted for the Mahayuti. So can the, the voters also figured out, or in terms of voters' perspective, the candidates put up by Mahayuti Gadbandan Alliance was much better compared to the candidates put up by the Maha Vikas Agadi's alliance partner. So all these things seems to have worked in favor of a Mahayuti compared to Maha Vikas Agadi. Uh, Sanjay, before we let you go, this data point that you've just shared, 45% of people took voting decision in last two days. Yes. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. What do you think shifted in the last two days for the Mahayuti? No, nothing shifted. The voters were watching. They were thinking carefully which party, which alliance to vote for. So that's the reason why voters were watching and that and that is connected to the candidate choice. They were looking at the merits and demerits of the candidate while voting. We let you go now, but this is an astounding data point. 50% of voters surveyed said that the candidate mattered more than the party, uh, which means that we're entering an era of really hyper-localized uh, sort of elections, making election management and the operation on the ground much more important than even the rhetoric 
uh, that is that is seen on social media and media. Professor Sanjay Kumar, always a pleasure. Thank you so much, and talk to you again soon. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Vojo's story and support independent, robust journalism.